There is an entire set of golf clubs in this tube. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. I just got this delivery. This is a golf club, which will replace all of your golf clubs. And I just got it in the mail. This was actually on Kickstarter a while ago. And like many things on Kickstarter, it was delayed. And I will say that this was delayed six or seven months. That's actually maybe the best experience with Kickstarter I've ever had. I mean, sometimes the things never show up, sometimes they're a year or two delayed. So it was really supposed to come this spring or summer, but it just came now, just in December here, and I was actually one of the early adopters, so I got it pretty early. I think a lot of people will be waiting until the new year to get theirs, but I'm pretty excited because I wanna show it to you. Now, I was hoping to get this out on the course, but we're gonna have to do this in the simulator until the spring, and then we will take it out on the course and we'll play a full round with it first of all this is a club called q q club and it's one club that is supposed to replicate all of your clubs now you have probably seen on my channel i did a review of the divnik club which was an adjustable club and this is the newest latest greatest version of something like that and it's actually called q because it was originally called urquart who is the guy who originally developed the very first one and so nobody could pronounce it i'm not sure that i'm pronouncing it right no one could spell it and so they changed their name to q which I think was a very, very good choice. It actually kind of reminds me of like Q Branch in the James Bond series. Now, this is how it comes. It actually comes in a cardboard box. I'm really actually impressed with the packaging, but we get this huge nylon tube. It's kind of a hard case tube. I mean, there's like a plastic sleeve around it, but I could certainly karate chop this sucker in half. But as you might be able to see, this thing is pretty long and it needs to be because the club in here is actually pretty long. So. One of the things that I assume, and this is just a little aside here, is that I assume that finding packaging and all this stuff is pretty easy and that it's the development of the club that takes a long time. But I hope that they didn't hold off on the rollout of this because of like any of the packaging. I would rather get the club in its final working condition without all the flourishes, but the packaging and the presentation certainly is nice. So what you might be able to see is flip this open. We've got a little foam pad right there and the club is already sticking out. As I mentioned, this is a pretty long case here and the club is pretty long too. It's actually what I noticed here, 39 inches, which makes it basically about a three iron length club. Now that's kind of what they've determined is the right balance between a club that is supposed to be a driving iron on some holes and then a putter on the green. You know, it's gonna be a wedge and all the clubs in between. Now, I play single length clubs and I really love them. And most of those clubs are a seven iron length. So I think they're about two, two and a half inches shorter than this, you know, 36, 37 inches, I think are most seven irons. So 39 is pretty long. That length comes with some pros and cons. So first of all, this is going to be kind of like a long iron. When you put this in the hybrid setting, you can hit long shots with it. But one of the things that I've noticed already is because it's pretty long, they have put a very long grip on it. I think it's only maybe two or three inches longer than a standard grip, but that allows you to choke up on it. So one of the pros here is that they are kind of making some accommodations to shorten up the club effectively by allowing you to choke up on the grip. Now, one of my cons with this is that this is a kind of your standard taper grip. I would rather it be a straight taper grip, kind of like the ones I'm using on my club so that when you do choke up, you actually don't have any feel in your hand changes. So that's kind of a big one. But the real big one here is when you put this sucker on putter setting, and I'm gonna give you a close look at the head unit here. I think this is the most important part. But when you do choke up on this, what ends up happening is you get so much extra club is that when you are putting it down and putting, you kind of get this piece, you know, if you're shorter like me, five foot seven, five foot eight, kind of pokes you in the belly a little bit here. So either you could be really thin, which I have chosen not to do, or you can kind of have a really long putter by not choking up on it as much, but that's probably the place where I have noticed the length working against it. So obviously on the longer distance iron shots here, that's not a problem. Even on the wedges, that's really not a problem. Now I will tell you that before I play this, I am going to actually trim this down to my one length and I'm gonna regrip it with my no taper grip here. But I also wanna show you here that it comes with their proprietary shaft. It's actually by Taki and kind of reminds me of like Taki, those little chips that you get at the grocery store. This is the regular flex. I'm not sure that they gave me an option on that. You can see it says 80 grams. It seems pretty good here, right? I mean, I can flex it a little bit. It definitely seems like a regular flex. It kind of makes it a little lighter. And 
I think that's going to suit most people. Now, the one thing I will say here is I don't know what the head weight or the lie angle of this is. And one of the things that I would say here is that my guess is that they're kind of splitting between a wedge and a three iron, and it's probably somewhere in the seven or eight iron lie angle range. But because of all of the hardware that they need here, they probably need some sort of fulcrum in here to have this rotate around and then you have actually what is pretty big head i think this is really hollowed out in there but you need a pretty big head to have the flange and whatnot for the wedges but also act like the other clubs and so i think you get a lot of mass down here now it doesn't really seem super heavy to me so they've done a good job of controlling that somehow but i wouldn't be surprised if you have more head weight down here than you would on say a three iron but less than you would on your sand wedge or your pitching wedge or something like that. The other thing that I am a little worried about is where the mass is in the head because I know that they were talking about this being very fade biased originally so that seems to me that they had a lot of weight in the toe so that toe wasn't coming around a lot and so what I think they've tried to do here is even it out a little bit. My guess is that there's only so much you can do because of the mechanism in here with that but somehow and I've seen people hitting this on videos they have seemed to even that out. But what I would expect here is that this club will not perform as well as any of the clubs that it is compared against. So I think your seven iron will do better than this as a seven iron or your driving hybrid will do better than this because there are just trade-offs right i don't think they can use the same materials they can't use like a flex face they can't move the weights around a lot in fact because this is dynamic here right the center of gravity i think can shift quite a bit just from head to head here unless the weights were moving internally or kind of mounted on the fulcrum there or something like that but i don't know that you can do that it's just the limitations of making a club that is supposed to act like all clubs it's never going to be better than any one club but this could be really fun for taking around the golf course the par three going on vacation having in the trunk of your car getting in a little practice maybe getting in a quick par three before work i know a lot of guys will go out and get a 5 45 tea time 6 a.m tea time play around before work i don't know who gets up that early someone who is a little cuckoo in the brain but you could certainly do that now now i want to show you the mechanism here for making this club every club because you have suffered through the rest of my commentary and i am going to bring in a close-up of this and show you one how it works and some of my initial thoughts on the pros and cons of it all right so one of the first things i want to show you here is i just want to put it on the putter setting here and this is probably my big concern with it is that if i put it on the ground here and aim the camera straight at it what you can see is that we still have some loft i know on putters one degree of loft is kind of what you're supposed to have one one and a half some people will forward press on that but what i've noticed here is that it really looks like you know and it might not look like it on camera but it looks like it has two or three degrees of loft even when i forward press it now it seems like it still has maybe one and a half two degrees of loft on it so depending on how much you would forward press this on a putt you know you might have to do more than you would normally do like i feel like this looks vertical right so this looks like zero degrees up and down on the face which is probably fine but i feel like i am forward pressing this three degrees here so i don't know if i'm quite getting the best angle for putter but we're probably very close and i don't know that it's a big deal one of the other things that I would say is missing on this, but I don't think it's a huge deal. On the Divnik, they actually had a straight line painted on the back here. So when you were in putter mode like this, you actually had a perpendicular alignment line. Now, I could probably take a piece of vinyl tape or something like that and put one on there, but I don't think it's that big of a deal, especially if you are about to putt. You know, you could just put your ball down there and uh, putt that sucker away. So not the biggest deal, but just keep in mind, I think you're going to have to forward press this as a putter more so than you would on your normal putters i really do like the color scheme they picked this was actually proposed to be fluorescent green but they went with this kind of charcoal gray with the green q there the little plug here that prevents you from adjusting the mechanism or going in there it's not supposed to be serviced it's kind of this oval so that i think they can get in there but you can't i think that was a square recess for kind of a standard tool at the beginning but it looks pretty nice i mean it's got kind of this brush finish it's got this big trailing flange right here which i think is useful for when this goes into the wedge you can see here that 
I don't think the lie angle will change on this. You know, I haven't noticed that. I think that would actually be kind of hard to do, but it might a little bit. You can see the little black dot here that lines up with the markings for the different types of clubs. I would say at a glance, it certainly looks to be light years ahead of the Divnit Club, which I thought was really interesting, but in practice didn't really work that well for me. The other thing I will say here is that the club seems wider now it actually seems a little wider here where it meets the hosel so i think that's just kind of the nature of it but it also seems wider to me it almost seems like a hybrid length toe to heel as opposed to an iron it just seems a little wider but one of the things that i've noticed here is that when it's laying flat it actually doesn't look as tall as most wedges there so that's going to be a little bit of a trade-off top to bottom it's not quite as tall as a wedge but especially when you're in the driving iron it's going to be a little taller so that's probably going to slow it down a little bit so you don't want this really high toe big face kind of cutting through the wind at 90 miles an hour all right so first of all you're wondering how this works and i want to show you here that down here we have some markings p is for putter h hybrid seven nine sand wedge lob wedge and then you have this little dot in this line here so what you have to do is you have to push these together and then it will rotate it will actually stop when you can't go any farther and what i've noticed here is if you overshoot you can see how it's not coming out it's probably two millimeters right there so i'm not locked in so i have to push that in line that up and now this will expand out and that looks like it's about four millimeters so you know it's locked in then you might be saying well if you just push it in and you rotate it and let it kind of push back out i think there must be a spring that's pushing this back out won't that kind of move around when you swing it and it's really the centrifugal force that toe coming around that's going to hold this into place so it's actually a pretty ingenious little mechanism especially over the divnik where you'd have to untighten it by hand and tighten it up by hand now i will say what i like about this is it seems like a very smooth action i don't think you have to worry about sand getting in there but they certainly say after a sand shot you're supposed to kind of just hit it on the ground knock that sand off i would probably try to take your towel wipe it down maybe if you have a water bottle just run a little water on it make sure you don't get anything in there but maybe you could send it back to them if you get some grit in there and they can take it apart and service it or something like that but what i also think you can do is i think you can kind of get some intermediate spots here so i want to go from the putter here which is the vertical one to the hybrid you can see those lines line up perfectly but if i push this back in try to go intermediate you can see it comes all all the way so it seems like kind of a long hybrid or a short hybrid you know you're probably only talking about a degree of difference there but it might make a difference if you're really dialing this in and you can gap this really well so that'll kind of be my first exercise just to see what kind of distances i'm getting i'm less concerned about the numbers as opposed to just knowing what each of these settings will give me in distance right but what i can do here is if i go all the way to the lob wedge that pops out but i can't go out any further right i can't overshoot particularly so what i want to show you here is that if i put this down on the lob wedge you can see what that looks like at a dress it looks a little funny to me and one of the big reasons i think is because it's sitting so high off the ground so what you might not be able to see here is that when this is in the wedge format man there is a big big gap between the bottom of the club and the leading edge of the club right here more so than i think i've seen on any other club now that's partially because this has such a long trailing flange right here or and a lot of bounce to it right but I think that's generally okay because you're going to kind of lean the shaft forward a little bit. It's going to take a little bit out of that. You're probably going to use this in less than ideal conditions here. But if you have some really tight lies, I think that's going to be a little bit of a problem. So you'll probably want to go down to like that 8 iron and then try to kind of chip it from there, right? A lot less bounce. So obviously when we go up to the longer ones, you just have the sharp edge. You don't really have any relief, any bounce to note there you really have to go down to the wedges to get that and when you get down to the wedges you're going to actually have a fairly significant amount of it now one of the things that i want to say is i heard when they were building this mechanism that they actually heard from some people who were older or weaker that they wanted to lighten it up because they couldn't push this in so i thought man this is going to be so light it's just going to kind of spring around i will tell you this is pretty stiff so if this was stiffer before they made this adjustment, it's pretty stiff. I think one of the issues is that you don't really push directly in there. You're kind of holding this hosel and pushing in. So it's not really kind of this direct press. But, you know, I'm an average strength guy here. And I would say it's not hard, but it has a decent amount of resistance. I can definitely see people being older or weaker than me having a little bit of trouble with this. So I don't know if they could even lighten it up for some people kind of have a light spring resistance in there. But... That might be nice for some people who have even less hand strength because i can see that getting a little tiring but it's not bad and it's certainly a lot easier than some of the alternatives right all right 
So this is what it looks like, you know, polished around here, kind of your standard grooves here, you know, no painted grooves on the bottom or anything. You can see how this flange works. Again, I think this little bump out here is meant to give you a lot of surface area to prevent digging, to kind of float above the grass in the wedge formats. It's a pretty nice polished hosel right there. So I dig it, it's pretty nice. So far my initial impressions are it's as good as I was expecting. I think a lot of those close-ups, and I know they did a lot of testing with it, gives me a lot of reassurance. It gives me a lot of confidence that this is going to be a quality product, and so far it certainly looks like it. Now, the key here is, how does it hit? Can I play it? Can this be a club that I keep in the trunk of my car? You know, is this something I could take on vacation? You know, for three, almost $400, you could buy a set of decent clubs for that so is this something that will perform and save you time and money because if it doesn't perform if it just looks good and is kind of a novelty then i don't think anyone will really use it but like i said i have a buddy that lives in the city he has to take a bus to get to his local golf course he does not want to take a lot of clubs at most he'll have one of those sunday bags he puts three or four clubs in there to play his local par three i think something like this would even be more perfect for him so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to trim this down to the true one length because it's kind of a one length club and then regrip it. Before we hit the simulator with these, I've gone ahead and regripped this. And so it's the exact same length as my one length LTDX irons here. And a couple things that I want to show you. So I've got the scale out here. I want to go ahead and put this on the scale. I want to give you total weight. This isn't going to be totally fair because I have different shafts in there, but I have the same grips. And you can see that this is 422 grams for the Q club. Now, if I throw on my LTDX iron here, what you might be able to see is this is 437 grams and so what's interesting is that my one length clubs are actually heavier overall again because I think they have that seven iron head weight now I know the shaft is lighter because it says 80 grams on the Q club and I use the steel fiber 115 grams so I think that is really where this is being accounted for mostly and I don't know how much of an impact that's gonna make on shots and whatnot. But now that I have this set up just like my existing clubs, let's take them to the simulator and compare them. All right, I'm over here at the sim and I've got the Q club here. And of course, when I first thought about testing this, I thought, well, I'm gonna hit the range, gap it to my existing clubs. But I thought, you know, there's almost no reason to do that other than figuring out what distance I get with these clubs. But a seven iron is not necessarily the same as a seven iron in another set. You know, there's loft jacking and there are a lot of different technologies so that clubs are supposed to perform about the same, you know, based on the number. But what I thought here is that's kind of irrelevant and I just don't have a lot of patience. I want to play with this thing and see how it goes because it's so buttery smooth here that I thought that this would be a fun to just try out and we will learn as we go. Or if you're like me, I will learn much, much later because I am much, much slower. So what I have done here is I've set myself up with the front nine at the country club here um and i thought i would just start playing this we'll see how it goes with the first hits i've got it set on the hybrid which is what i think i would drive with this i kind of found especially on that divnik club that in the driving iron i didn't hit it very high or very far i was actually hitting it farther with the five iron setting on that club than i was with any of the more stronger lofted settings here so what i am going to do is i'm just going to tee this up and hit this and we'll see how it goes it's definitely thinking that I am going to play a drive here and I am going to be under 200 yards somewhere on this one. So I'm just going to kind of put it out here and be a little bit safe. But let's try this first. All right. First swings with this. I am curious to see how this goes. Well... Not a huge shot, 175. It's gonna be in the fairway though. And now I'm 180 yards to the pin. So I'm actually gonna hit the same hybrid iron again here. Just see if we can kind of dial it in as we do this. A little bit short, but off the deck on that one. But you know what? So far, I really like the way this feels. 
That's for sure. I'm only 27 yards out, which means this would be a wedge. So I'm going to go all the way up to the lob wedge here. And this would just be kind of a half shot. The issue to me with this, and I think I mentioned this, is that when you put this in the wedge setting, you can see it has so much bounce. There is way more gap between the lip and the ground than there is in a traditional wedge. So instead of setting up like this, I really find that you have to kind of put this behind it to get this leading edge a little closer to the ground because otherwise I feel like it's right at the equator of the ball. So I would play this back in my stance anyway, but today I'm playing it way back. All right. Hmm. Wasn't super far. But not bad now. We're going to go to the putter setting here. Like I said, that putter setting also looks like it's got a little loft on it. So I'm going to lean ahead on this and it's going to break right to left 22 feet. So I'm just kind of curious to see how this lags compared to my current putter. Yeah, it doesn't putt bad. It's gonna take me a little while to get this dialed in here. All right, that was a little ugly. But now it's saying that I'm going to drive, which I'm not because I don't have a driver, but I am gonna go back here to the hybrid setting and again, get to tee it up here. Mm. A little fatter than I would have liked there. Only about 160 yards out of that shot. All right. I'm going to keep it on hybrid. Kind of need to. It says I'm in the fairway. Let's see if I can pick it clean. That was a miss hit. I got that one right off the toe. That did not feel good. But this gives me 81 yards to the green. So I actually have a chance here to use an intermediate club. And normally on this, I would pick maybe my gap wedge. So I'm not exactly sure what that would be here. I'm gonna actually just put it on the sand wedge setting. We'll see. Nice, that was not very far. And that sand wedge may just be more loft than my gap wedge. It's hard to know. But what I'm going to do here, because I'm in the sand, I'm actually going to go a little stronger. I'm putting it on the 9 iron here. Bleed off a little bit of distance because of my line. Alright, back to the putter. 30 feet. Looks like it's downhill and breaks, so. Yee. Yeah. And just give it to me. All right. Starting to figure it out. Um, everything seems to play a little shorter than my Cobra One Length LTDX irons. That's not a surprise, even though I've got this club set up to the same length as my one length clubs. It's just the trade-off, I think, right now in terms of the technology. You know, my Cobras have the power shell face, the really thin, flexible face, the weight in the toe and the heel and very low. All of those things are going to contribute to more ball flight and more speed and all that. And I think that this is really more trying to take all the components that make an adjustable club and make it as good as you can for all the clubs. Now, I will say it actually feels and plays pretty nice. You know, you don't get any of this kind of weird sensation when you're swinging through it, like there's a lot of weight on the toe or an abnormal amount of weight on the heel or anything like that. And even on the strikes, it doesn't feel bad. I would think that because you have a little bit of a disconnect where the movable portion of the head meets the hosel here, maybe it would feel a little flimsy. You know, maybe the graphite shaft is also taking up some of that vibration, but you don't get any 
feeling in your hand like it hurts. And I think the extra weight in the head kind of paces you a little bit as well as, you know, dampens maybe some of that vibration. So what I have here is a shot where I'm going to go back to the hybrid again. Kind of will pay attention to my launch angle on this one. Just kind of curious what I'm getting. I felt like a decent strike. 190 yards almost there. The launch angle is 18.7 on the hybrid. Now that's off a of tee. That's actually a little higher than I would expect. It's actually maybe close to what I would expect with my hybrid. My driver should be a little lower, 16 degrees. So I actually kind of wonder, I'm a little curious because it looks like I can go into this intermediate space between the hybrid and the putter. And like I said, because the putter seems to have, I don't know, four or five degrees on it, maybe it's worth trying to hit that. But I think the next time I drive, I'm going to go with this intermediate setting between the hybrid and the putter and just see if I can get that launch angle down a little and the distance up a little. So 163, generally this would be my six iron. I'm actually gonna try the six iron on this one. Just see what that does. Faded that one quite a bit. Um, again, all right, I will tell you this. The distance just seems just a little shorter than what I would play on my other clubs, but now that I'm kind of figuring out that I would just take whatever distance I go with my normal clubs and kind of remove 10 yards, I kind of think now, after the third hole here, I might actually have this thing kind of figured out. The wedges is probably the hardest one because I'm not sure what those lofts are. I'm gonna to go to what I think is the gap wedge, right between the nine and the sand wedge. And this has 42 yards. And again, I'm not one of those that believes in like full swings with wedges. So it's kind of a 75% swing on what I think is a gap wedge sitting here. Ball way back though in the sands. You chose poorly. Wow. So you get to see how us hackers do it. Um, I'm only 20 yards here, so I'm gonna try a little bit of a bump and run. I'm gonna go up to what I think is the eight iron here, between the seven and the nine, and just try to do a little bump and run. Greens are a little firm today. Could have been better, but like I said, these are the first real hits with this thing. And despite me not playing great, I will tell you what, I don't know that I actually play any better in real life, but I will tell you what, the club feels nice. I mean, it feels way better than the Dibnik. It feels like a regular club. I'm not actually thinking in my mind that I'm just playing with kind of a non-conforming adjustable club. You know, when I set up to this, it doesn't feel or even really look like in my mind something wacky. You know, with the Divni, you had the little thumb screw hanging off the back and it was kind of this wacky telescoping steel shaft and all that, but not on this one. It just it feels nice. Is this a club you would take to your local par three course and just carry around? I think you would, because, man, all right, this is a long one. My buddy Bjorn likes to go and get nine holes in at a par three before work. So he gets up early, and the thing I would think about this is that this is the club you want. Just put it in the trunk of your car, always have it there, and if you have a chance, you don't even have to think about getting your clubs, probably just your glove and if you checked out my video about that little pocket pouch that goes on your hip you know carry your balls your tees your divot repair tool between this this and that i think you're ready to go and you don't have to worry about having your clubs taking your clubs out all of that jazz i think that's pretty awesome so now we're going to start getting into the experimentation phase here all right this is 166 and it's 
par 3. And I would play this like I would play a 176, and as you saw, that would be actually my hybrid. So I'm going to put it right back in the hybrid, not teed up here, and just see how, see how close we can get on this. Oof. I'm definitely fading them. That may be just me figuring out how this club behaves, the way it's weighted. I normally would not have fade at all. If anything, I would push a little left. It's actually something I've been trying to correct. But you know what? I'm going to go all the way up to the lob wedge because that gap wedge put me in the water on the last one. And again, this is the one that kind of freaks me out because of what that looks like. Here on the lob wedge setting, the head definitely looks a little disconnected. It looks a little unnatural. And more than anything, that bounce is just crazy, crazy on this, right? So you can see, I might have the club like that, and you've got that leading edge just super, super high. So, let's see if we can get it close to the pin here. Nice square to square shot, man. I tell you what, I mean, normally you'd have the ball maybe on the inside of your right foot here. I mean, I've darn near got it outside my foot just to get that leading edge down to where I feel comfortable with it. So this is, it's a little bit of an awkward stance for me, to be honest. Not quite enough, but actually that wasn't all that bad. I thought it would be enough, but I'm going to leave it on this setting here because it's saying that it thinks it's a wedge shot. So I still have 26 feet to the pin. And if I could, this would be kind of my flop shot, but I'll be honest, I don't know that you can flop shot with this, kind of the real wristy, handsy cut on it, just because of the amount of bounce that you have on the club. So, again, I'm just gonna kinda try to chip it here, 26 feet. That's a little too much, but trying to get the hang of it. I actually like the wedge. It seems to perform pretty well. I mean, it's a simulator, but you know, sometimes really wacky things can happen on that. But I will say it's kind of the mid irons that I like the best. It's like this is a pretty straight putt. Simmer, 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 simmer. Just a little bit strong, you know, the way I am. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah! You're not too good for your home. Long one. Now, this is where I'm really going to experiment. I'm going to just leave it on the putter setting. You might be able to see right there. And again, it might be a little hard here, but you can see the face of the club right there. So I feel like it's actually a little bit more like my driver than I would expect. But maybe get that launch angle down just a little bit. Maybe eke out just a little bit more distance out of it. That was poor decision, it looks like. <laughs> um, I'm actually not really sure how I did that. 31 degrees. In fact, what I feel like I want to do here as I do in real life, I'm going to give myself another shot on that, a mully, as we say. And I think there's not a whole lot I can do about it without going to no tee, is that I got way under it, caught the bottom of the ball with the top of the club. That's what explains the 31, 32 degree launch angle there. I'm going to try to just adjust here and see if I can get a little bit better contact with the face, but again, on this putter setting. Okay, that's two shots on the putter setting. And I'm gonna tell you something. The launch angle wasn't that bad, 13 degrees. But what I did feel like is I caught that squarely on the toe. I think, you know, when you don't have a lot of loft, you don't have the forgiveness of that loft. But there is a pretty big difference between hitting it on this putter setting and this hybrid setting. There does seem to be 
a spot in between you know these graduations are pretty small so i might try that one but in terms of hitting it on the putter setting you know you might be tempted to do that i'm sure some people can do it but i got the launch angle right but i definitely did not hit it on the face in a way that was comfortable i definitely felt the twisting action in my hands when i hit that one and i'm still super far away so back to the hybrid setting here but now that i think i'm kind of getting it in i feel like maybe you'll just start eking a little more distance out of this thing not a great shot there 96 yards wedge this would absolutely be a pitching wedge for me so i'm going to go to nine right between the nine and the sand wedge here and just see what this is like but my pitching wedge would be 105 yards so i just bring it back a little bit i'm kind of curious to see what i'll get on this one all right so you know, i'm not sure that that's an accurate representation of what my pitching wedge is but now i know what would be a pitching wedge on here is kind of an 80 85 yard shot for me so again just just shorter than what your typical clubs would play i guess depending on which clubs you have and how old they are and all that but for me pretty clear gimme all right so two things i'm going to try on this one so i'm going to use this very very short tee so it will be off the ground but it'll be very low and as i mentioned instead of the putter setting i'm going to go between the putter and the hybrid here might be hard to see there but i'm on neither the putter or the hybrid i'm just in between which Well, I tell you what, I think that's about all I can get out of it. I mean, looks like I could maybe get this out there 200 yards if I hadn't hit that rough, but I don't have much more capability with this than that. So to be really honest, there's a par three that I'm gonna plan on playing this spring. And I'm not sure that any, except maybe one of the holes is 200 yards. So 62 yards, I'm gonna go all the way down to the lob wedge here. I'm actually going to go up one from the lob wedge to the sand wedge. All right, starting to get a feel for the wedges. I think with anything, any new club, and a club as unique as this, it's just going to take a little bit of time. I certainly could have practiced with this on the virtual range, but it's kind of like reading a manual if I'm about to put together a piece of furniture. You know where that manual goes? Right in the garbage, because real men don't need manuals. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, 32 feet, right to left. And I send it way past. All right. That's a gimme. I tell you what, I'm starting to really like this thing. I know I haven't shown you any good golf today, but I will say this, that the club itself has so many interesting merits. First of all, it's not cheap. You know, this club is $380, $400, I think, something like that. But it is beautifully made. The innovation that has gone into making a single adjustable club is much better i mean it's far and away better than the divnik or anything else that i've ever seen it feels good to play when you do hit it in the sweet spot and the few times that i've gotten it there see the little ball marks there it does seem to play fine if you hit it off the toe or the heel 
it's bad, just like every other club. Now, it might be a little worse than the clubs you're playing. You know, if you're playing game improvement irons like me that tend to be a little more forgiving, you know, if you get a little squirrely on the face, you might eke out a better shot than you would on this. It's just kind of the nature of having a big mechanism in here to move this around. I will say, though, that I am planning on playing with this outside as soon as the weather turns because it's that interesting. And again, this could just fit in your trunk under the rear seat of your car or something like that. And I have the ability to play golf at any time at a moment's notice and actually play, I think, fairly decently. What I said is, you know, any of the club numbers that I pick right here are just gonna be 10, 15, even maybe 20 yards shorter than the clubs I'm playing. That's a pretty big difference. But again, the numbers are almost irrelevant. If they had just put like letters here, you know, that actually might work fine too. But I get that they have put iron numbers on there, but it's just not equivalent to what I'm seeing on my LTDX irons, which should be some of the best performing irons out there. So you can't really compare them to something that is a single use, single purpose built type of club. For me, if someone needs something like this, you live in an apartment in the city, like I said, and you take the bus to the golf course, this is gonna be awesome. If you wanna just be able to get in nine holes at a par three before you go to work, this is gonna be awesome. If you just aren't really super into golf and you don't wanna have a big golf bag taking up space in your garage or your basement, this is gonna work. So I'm actually really impressed with this. I think, like I said, there are gonna be some things that you're gonna learn. The wedge, while it works, and I was starting to get comfortable with it is definitely different. It definitely looks and feels different than a regular wedge. And in future versions, I actually think that they could extend this face out like this so that there isn't so much bounce, there isn't such a big gap between the leading edge and the ground on the wedge setup. And so you would still have probably 10, 12 degrees of bounce, but I think it would give my mind and my eye a bit more comfort to have this a little closer to the ground and not look like it's going to just nip the ball in the equator. I think that would do two things. It would kind of elongate this face. So when I rotate this to the mid irons, it's actually extending the length of the club not much, but just a little bit. And that actually kind of makes it more of a variable length club, I think, which I think would be more familiar to a lot of players. Now for me, single length, I mean, and to be honest, if this adds six, seven millimeters to it, that's not really a big deal. That's not really variable length clubs. I mean, there can be an inch and a half, two inches difference between kind of your long irons and your short irons, but that might be just a little bit more comforting for people and kind of solve the wedge problem too. I don't know maybe in a future version. But as it stands right now, the Q Club is pretty awesome. Maybe one of my favorite innovations in golf clubs in the last few years here because it's just kind of adding fun back to the game. Maybe some future changes, maybe a little bit lower price point, whatever. I think this is pretty cool. I'm certainly glad I got it. Even though I got it here in the winter, I'll definitely take a look at it again in the springtime when it is nice out. But if you want to pick up the Q adjustable golf club, just keep in mind the things that I discovered here, but I think you'll like it. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Peter Von Panda, out. We can discover more and explore so much deeper. We can live better than ever they